When discussing the sole proprietorship form of business, we cite a difficulty to expand as one of the limiting factors for expansion of the sole proprietorship kind of business. This, plus other limitations associated with the sole proprietorship business structure, pave way for associations of other business persons. The associations with other business persons give birth to a new form of business called partnerships. is an association of two or more people who agree to operate a business and share its profits. Or we can say that a partnership is a relationship which exists between two or more people with the view of making profit. A partnership is not limited to direct association between human beings, but can also include an association between other entities, such as corporations. However, for purposes of this course, we shall stick to partnerships between individuals and so for a person to be a partner, they should be legally capable of contractual capacity, they should be sane, and they should be financially sound. A partnership can be formed in the following ways. You can form a partnership by word of mouth. This is where two or more people can agree orally to do business. So it's a matter of waking up, you just talk to a friend, you agree and the partnership is born. A partnership can also be formed by writing. Now here, what I mean is that partners sit down and agree to draft a document that describes how partners are supposed to behave towards each other and towards the business they are to run. This document is what we call a partnership deed. And a good partnership deed should address some of the following issues. It should address the name under which the partners uh, want to do a business. It should have the names and signatures of the partners. A good partnership deed should have information on interest, on capital and drawings for the partners. Then also the nature and scope of the business needs to be talked about in the partnership deed. The capital contributions of each partner has to be spelled out in the partnership deed. The partnership deed should also talk about how profits and losses should be shared among the partners, how the salaries are to be determined, that is if there is any a partner to be given a salary. Then also it should talk about the roles and responsibilities of each and every partner. Then as far as power is concerned, the limitations on the power of each partner has to be spelled out very clearly in the partnership deed. So the method by which a given partner may withdraw from the partnership and that whole process needs to be spelled out clearly in the partnership deed. Then also when it comes to continuation of the partnership in the event of a partner's death, the formula or the procedures of how this continuation is going to be, how the heir of the partner is supposed to be compensated, these need to be spelled out in the partnership deed. Then also in case the partnership is to be closed, and the business is to stop. The partnership did need to explain the method of winding up and dissolving the partnership. So these are just a few of the key issues that need to be in a partnership deed. Well, there I was talking about forming a partnership by writing. Let's get on to another way a partnership can be formed. There is what we call forming a partnership by implication or call it an implied agreement. Now, for example, if I am a carpenter, I could go out and advertise my services. And upon advertising, I start getting a lot of orders to make furniture. Now, because the orders are too many, I decide to contact my friend, Steve, to come and help me deliver the work. So when Steve comes on board, we start choosing which work to do first and which one not to do. We set deadlines between ourselves on what we, we should do and so that we're able to they we're able to satisfy my clients so we start working on delivering the orders to my clients and now and now what exactly is happening here is that steve and i are having an implied partnership without intending to create a partnership at all so in other words me and steve have created a partnership by implication then also the other way, a partnership can be formed by holding out. Let me explain what I mean. A partner by holding out is someone who is not a partner of a partnership, but knowingly allows the partnership of, to project him as a partner to other people. 
So a person who is a partner by holding out is more like goodwill ambassador of the partnership. Such people may not receive monetary benefits unless the actual partners decide to, you know, give the monetary benefit. Partnerships by holding out are formed when either an individual who is not an actual partner decides to help the partnership because they probably know the founder personally or maybe the partnership appointed him or her to vouch on their behalf due to the prior experience rendered. In other words, this is an arrangement where the partnership decides to project an external individual to other people as a partner, when in actual sense he's not a partner, probably because the individual possesses an advantage that could be beneficial to the partnership. Now, I hope that makes sense. Now, I've talked about how a partnership can be formed, and to give us a brief summary, a partnership can be formed by word of mouth, by writing an agreement, by implication, and also by holding out. So in general terms, a partnership is a business agreement between two or more people called partners. Partners have an interest in the business for which they are associated. These interests can vary from partner to partner depending on the focus and objective of the business. Now I've already mentioned that partnerships are governed by an agreement called a partnership deed or a partnership agreement which fully stipulates all the business's operational provisions and activities. This therefore means that partnerships have the flexibility to be structured as they choose under their own partnership agreements. Since partnerships have the freedom to structure how the partnerships will be, let's explore some of the partnership structures. We have what we call the general partnership. A general partnership is a partnership between two or more people who share in the profits and the liabilities of the company. This can be as informal as a verbal agreement made over a cup of tea or a formal contract between the parties involved. Since with a general partnership there is unlimited liability, these are similar to sole proprietorships. The difference being that in sole proprietorship it is only one owner with unlimited liability. But with a general partnership it is two or more owners with unlimited liability. Then there's what we call a limited partnership. A limited partnership is a type of partnership that consists of at least one limited partner and at least one general partner. In a limited partnership, the general partner is responsible for managing the business's day-to-day -day activities. The limited partner is more like a silent partner that has invested in the company. Now there's what we call the limited liability partnership. Limited liability partnerships are usually structured with protection for partners' personal assets. It combines the characteristics of partnerships and corporations, especially in the area of limited liability. A limited liability partnership is a form of business partnership where all of the partners have limited personal liability for the financial obligations of the business. Now let us not confuse a limited partnership and a limited liability partnership. A limited partnership is a type of partnership that consists of at least one general partner and at least one limited partner, whereas a limited liability partnership does not have a general partner. All partners in a limited liability partnership have limited personal liability. When it comes to the structure of a limited liability partnership and a limited partnership in a limited partnership, a general partner is responsible for managing the company's day-to-day -day activities. The limited partner in a limited partnership does not participate in making managerial decisions for the business. In a limited partnership, the limited partner is more like a silent partner that has invested in the business. However, in a limited liability partnership, all partners of the company are allowed to make management decisions for the company. Now take note. When I say general partner, this is what I mean to say, that a general partner is a partner that has unlimited liability for the debts of the partnership, can legally bind the business and is personally liable for the day-to-day -day activities of the business. Then when I say a, a limited partner, this is what I mean. A limited partner, on the other hand, is just a part owner of the business and their liability for partnership's debts do not exceed the amount that individual has invested. 
So a quick look at the advantages of a partnership. Of course, the advantages associated with being in a partnership form of business, number one is there is going concern. In other words, there is survival capacity if, and that is only if it is provided for. So if one of the partners decides to leave, there is possibility for the partnership to continue. And again, I repeat, it is if it is provided for in the partnership deed. Then two, there is increased capital since there is more than one individual contributing to the firm's capital. Different individuals in the partnership may um, have different connections and therefore they have different capacities to bring in money for the business. Then also there is shared risk, the personal element in the business and the corresponding care, efficiency and the economy are ensured. There is therefore an effective motivation to production. There is flexibility. A partnership is generally easier to form, manage and run. They are less simply regulated than companies in terms of the laws governing the formation. And furthermore, it's the partners who decide how they want the partnership to be run. So this further makes the partnerships a lot more flexible. Then there is shared responsibility. The fact that there are partners involved leads to sharing of responsibilities. This definitely allows the partners to concentrate on their skills or to concentrate their skills on aspects of the business they feel they can execute best. Then speaking of decision making, the decision making is relatively easy since uh, you know decisions are made by many brains. There is always that mantra that two heads are better than one. So in a partnership, you have more brains that are more brains brainstorming on an idea, and so decision making becomes easier. However, there are also demerits associated with a partnership form of business and the biggest of them being the potential for disagreements. Like I said, this is one of the most reasons why partnerships dissolve. It's obvious that people are most likely to have different ideas on how businesses should be run or who should be doing what and what best interests the, of the business are. This can lead to disputes that may instead harm the business and the relationships of the people involved. The other disadvantage is the issue of liability. Now, general partnerships are subject to unlimited liability, which means each of the partners shares the liability and the financial risk of the business. This only is applying to general partnerships. Then the other disadvantage is um, the slower decision making. The decision making process in a partnership is slow compared to sole proprietorship. Why? Because before a major decision is made, you have to first consult all the partners and gain consensus to see whether, you know, a certain decision has to be taken and that is time wasting. Then also there is what we call joint accountability. In general partnerships, each partner is not only liable for his actions, but also for the actions of other partners as well. This means that if one partner makes a mistake, this mistake will affect other partners as well. So it therefore becomes important for the partners to know themselves very well and develop trust among themselves before developing a partnership business. Then speaking of continuity, continuity is not guaranteed. And so a partnership risks closure in case of death of a partner. And also when it comes to bringing in a new partner, uh, bringing in a new partner is only possible when all existing past partners agree unanimously. And bringing someone from outside to enjoy the trust of everyone is not an easy job. So in conclusion, a partnership is an improvement of sole proprietorship and it is suited for business activities where investment is not very large and where the application of personal skill and judgment is required. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Ksembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you 